Welcome to Digital Asset News. I get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite sized pieces. Today, we got some more concerning news. First up, the People's Bank of China just delivered a death blow to local crypto OTC dealers and how this can happen in almost any country. Also, the digital currency from Line called Bitfront is now offering interest on a collaboration with the Celsius network. And this is just another example of how two exchanges are going to come together and make things better. Also, the biggest winners in the DeFi yield farming push is Wales, says data, which is not a surprise, but we're going to go over some pretty interesting statistics where you might not be too happy with how much this people make. That'll lead us into Q of the day, which we'll go over at the very last segment, but let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So it is September 24th. It is 3 p.m. Uh, Texas time. Getting to uh, all this stuff late. Had a lot of things going on. Other stuff, other businesses, but it is what it is. So um, taking a look at the market, maybe it was good I didn't do this until later because, wow, this is a complete sea of red. What a what a bloodbath, huh? Bitcoin down 3%, 6% down Ethereum. XRP is XRP. Bitcoin Cash, 3%, 4%. Wow, 9% for Chainlink. Ouch, E, 789. What are you going to do? Uh, 2.3. And just, I mean, just going through all this, I remember three or four weeks ago when uh, everything was just going super far up and everything was just going fantastic. And people were talking about these new projects and they put all their money into it. And I said, do not FOMO into these projects wait for later because you never know you're always want to have a little bit of extra reserves on the side so you can buy during times like this and you don't feel that pressure you don't feel like you just lost 16 percent in uma or nine percent in compound or you know 11 percent in urine you just you 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 don't have that pressure and uh that is just the big thing and i will just say it again this is not my first rodeo. This is probably not your first rodeo either, hopefully. And when you're going through this, and well, even if it is your first rodeo, here's the thing. Just learn from it and move on. Just remember from now on, don't FOMO on anything. Just dollar cost average. And uh, when you have days like this, these are the days when you're like, hey, I should probably buy a little bit more because it's <laughs> a huge drop. And you don't feel that pressure. I did that issue in 2018. I bought up a ton of stuff. And when things went down 20%, 25% I felt that crushing pressure because I was down I didn't have money on the side to buy anything else I was just down just sitting there going wow where do I want to go so that's just one of those lessons that I've learned and you can only learn it through pain and that's just how it goes so I'm not gonna harp on it let's just jump into today's video so first up this is kind of concerning People's Bank of China just uh, shut down a bunch of OTC dealers so what's going on here so the uh, Central Bank of China People's Bank of China is blacklisting the accounts of OTC traders in the region and its recent crackdown efforts. And when I first read this, I always think the most negative, like, ah, these Chinese, uh, the, the government, they're cracking down, they're, you know, uh, making things very stringent on their on their citizens, but really it's not that. Um, the, these are blacklisted merchants, will not be able to carry out online transactions for at least five years. So the problem here, and we'll get to that in a bit, is that these OTC uh, dealers, they can't really distinguish between who are the bad and who are the good because regulation is sparse. And that's the problem when people say, we need, you know, we don't need regulation. We do. We do need regulation to see, you know, what kind of boundaries that, that we can actually have. However, there's also a flip side of that, and it's called a decentralized exchange. But anyhow, I'll get into all that in a bit. So since the start of the year, China's central bank has been cracking down on money laundering in the country. The top bank partnered with several major banks to assist in stopping nefarious activities involving cryptocurrencies by sharing account details and transaction histories. So when I first read this, I was like, ah, those banks working together, you know, uh, snapping down on people. And I thought to myself, hold on, wait, what am I talking about? We were just up in arms a couple of days ago because uh, we heard about JP Morgan and Deutsche Bank and uh, the other, I forget the other uh, big bank, where they had done the exact same thing, turned a blind eye, not reported their uh uh, people that were actually investing you know, through their bank and money laundering, and they were washing this money in, uh, in a tune of $2 trillion. So when these banks step up and go, hey, there's some activities going on that we don't like to see, and this is illegal activity, this is cartel, this is drug money, this is uh, the Yakuza, or whatever it is over there, I don't know. But uh, they step up and go, we got to stop this, and they did. So, I mean, you can't have it both ways. And uh, I think that's actually good. Moving on, after a bank system has restricted a certain amount 
uh, account from conducting transactions. It will then report to the regional central bank. After review, the PBOC, People Banks of China, will then share the blacklisted accounts with all the banks across the country, thus hindering OTC merchants from registering for new accounts. But here's the thing. How can you tell which one is doing illegal activities and all these different um, nefarious projects and who are just regular OTC dealers that are trying to help institutional investors get their hands on Bitcoin? That's the thing. It should, however, be noted that the flagging of crypto oil accounts is not applicable to normal crypto trades. Huobi, who uh, is based out of Singapore and Hong Kong, I believe, the Huobi OTC desk is quoted as saying, normal crypto transactions are not illegal and only those involving black money and illicit assets will be frozen. Again, um, how do you determine that? Who is responsible for that? Who pegs it and says, this is illegal, this is not illegal? Uh, of course, they have to have their own, their own financial crimes division. Lastly, it say, states, yet due to the lack of common rules across the local banks, again, due to the lack of common rules across the local banks, a legitimate OTC dealer operating in China can easily be blacklisted despite not conducting any illegal crypto transactions. That's the problem. You're kind of caught in that middle. Like, hey, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to provide a service. I'm not over here doing what these guys are doing. I'm just a, you know, a regular small business that's trying to do the right thing and I got caught in the middle and now I'm out of a out of a job and I can't feed my family. That is the big problem. And that is why you really do need some type of regulation uh, everywhere, I think. Now, there's a way to get around this, not to get around, excuse me, I shouldn't say it like that. There is a alternative. And that alternative is a decentralized exchange, just like we have with Uniswap, just like with all the different decentralized exchanges popping up. You can't stop those decentralized exchanges unless you shut down the internet. And uh, that is one of those things that I see. However, I mean, with decentralized exchanges, there's other problems on there. There are scams. Uniswap is one of those places. There's a lot of different scams going on on there. A lot of different coins that are just you know brought in and who knows what's going on. It's not the most cleanest thing. So of course, with freedom, you're also gonna have the problems that go along with that, but it all depends and find that right equilibrium. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, Lines Global Digital Currency Exchange, Bitfront, now offering interest on crypto asset deposits through collaboration with Celsius Network. And I was, when, first of all, I got this from Alex Mashinsky off of Twitter because he tweeted this out. He says, I ain't lying. That's that's pretty funny. We told you big partners are launching with Celsius Network and we were not lying. Uh -huh. And then he gives you the article. Line is the largest company in terms of global users, 460 million to enter crypto. And yet Coindesk and the block would not write about it. I think they actually did later on, but at that point, uh, Alex was right. They didn't write about it. But it is interesting. So I took a look at the actual article. And of course, here we are. And just to make this really quick, Bitfront, which is Line Corporation's global digital currency exchange, is now providing interest on crypto asset deposits through a partnership with Celsius. And here's how it all works out. No minimum deposits, no lockups. Interest rate offer may change on a weekly basis. Interest is paid to the user account every Monday. And here's the rate. So kind of, it's the same thing as Celsius because they're using Celsius. So let's get into it. First of all, what the heck is Line and what is Bitfront? So Line, Line Corporation, Tokyo-based subsidiary of South Korean internet search engine. Uh, the company's business is mainly associated with the development of mobile apps and internet services, particularly the Line communication app, which is right here. Line, which is free calls and text messages. So kind of like WhatsApp, uh, but of course in the Asian market. Actually, I think, it's, I think it's global. It doesn't really matter. I've never seen Line. I don't use Line. I'm sure some people do. I'm sure it's fantastic, whatever. So that's what Line is. But I was curious, I'm like, well, how many users do they have? And uh, just to look it up, a little quick uh, stats. Line is a Japan-based cross-platform mobile messenger app with about 84 million active users in its home market as of 2020. Maybe it's grown a lot. Maybe there's some other type of apps that are using, which Alex was talking about, 506 million. I have no idea. That's a lot of, that's still a lot of people. It doesn't matter. So for reference, how many people does WhatsApp users have? And there are 2 billion. Again, really doesn't matter. I mean, you got 2 billion, 84 million. If you got 84 million people, that are now being having their eyes open to cryptocurrency. That's fantastic. We will take that. I will take that win. So then I take a look at, okay, so that's Line, the Line Corporation. So they have the Line app and they have Bitfront. And this is the cryptocurrency exchange itself. And another exchange, fantastic. USD market, out of deposit USD. Well, let's take a look. I'm curious. So let's see. So here's how you do it. Uh, fiat currency deposits. Uh, only residents in the US who have completed some type of verification, AML, KYC. 
uh, are able to do or actually make deposits. And it looks like it is ACH or automated clearinghouse uh, in that regard. However, I did notice up here a little uh, section that says buy cryptocurrency. Once you click on that, you can put in your Visa or MasterCard right here, and then you can use that to fund your account. The problem here is, well, actually not right now, because they use no fees for Simplex. And for Simplex, it says currently you don't have to pay a penny. Processing fees through Simplex usually account for 3.5% of the amount you pay to purchase cryptocurrency. So uh, if you're gonna use that route, then it's gonna be three and a half percent. So that's not so great. And the thing I always am concerned with is what exactly are the fees? Because are they like Coinbase fees? Are they like Kraken fees? <laughs> that's what I like to call it. So when I took a look at the actual fees, they're pretty low. So the market fees for both makers and takers, LN trades, line trades, you get 0.1% if you use their uh, token. Trades on USD, BTC, USDT are 0.2%. So just real quick, how transaction fees are calculated. It's the order amount, which is the quantity times the order price multiplied by the transaction fee, which is 0.2%. I'm good with that. That sounds fantastic, 0.2%. And then of course, if you scroll down, there's different things, you know, as far as like wire and then transfer fees and all the different things, if there are. And then of course, just like Voyager, they have a certain amount that you have to minimize withdraw or a minimal withdraw and how much the actual withdrawal fee is. So I know in Celsius, there is no fees to take your cryptocurrency off, which is pretty cool. Voyager and some other places uh, don't, uh, no, do have that, excuse me. Um, Coinbase doesn't have it. Coinbase Pro didn't used to, but with the different fees that are going on with the Ethereum network, uh, they've actually instituted uh, more fees to take uh, your cryptocurrency off. So if you want to see all those types of things that I talk about, there is a Google spreadsheet. It's called the Exchange of Wallet Fees, and it's all the different exchanges that I've used. I talk about this in every single video because everybody wants to know what is the alternative to uh, Coinbase. So I've used Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, Kraken, Celsius, and Voyager, which are like I guess I should call them like my one, two, three punch now, huh? Because Kraken, I moved it from just slightly recommended, but because of their banking license, I moved them into highly recommended. I think they're going to be the future. And not only that, but I mean, these fees are pretty darn smoking good. 0 0.16 to 0 0.26. And that's just a 50,000. If you're like a baller, you know, up to a million, you're only paying 0 0.08. So just so you know. And then Celsius, of course, I love that one. I've got 30% of my entire portfolio sitting on Celsius gaining interest. That's how much I like it. Voyager, I think it's easy, but it's uh, it's teetering. I'm telling you right now, it's teetering on my nerves for two reasons. One is that the cost to get things uh, off the exchange for USDC, it's $8 flat fee, right? So if you're taking 100 bucks of USDC off, that's gonna cost you eight bucks, that's 8%. Now, if you wanna move a million dollars, it'll only cost you eight bucks, so there's something to, to keep in mind. Also, half of the cryptocurrencies that are on there, you cannot take off. So like Cardano and uh, Polkadot and those type of things, they cannot come off the exchange right now. That's something they have to fix. I've talked to them many a time about it. I like them, but they gotta fix that. That is not good. I just don't like it. And then uh, uh, there's other things you can take off. Of course, the big ones, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all that good stuff. So just be aware. I've also got uh, Gemini. I talk about SimpleSwap, Uniswap, uh, Cash App, eToro, and Crypto.com. And if you want to sign up for them, there's an affiliate link. Um, you don't have to use it. But if you do, you get between 10 and 25 bucks. You can find the link for this spreadsheet in the description of every one of my videos. It looks just like this. And you can go through all the ins and outs and that's it. And that is it for that section. So I think that um, this partnership that uh, Bitfront and Celsius has uh, just uh, solidified, I think it's going to be big for both. And uh, we'll see how it all works out. But uh, again, I'm a huge believer in uh, Celsius and what they're trying to do. Um, their motto is do good, meaning do good for the people that are around you and the people that you want to serve. And then finally, do well, meaning financially. So I like that, uh, that whole segment there. All right, let's move on. Last up, whales profit mightily from lucrative DeFi yield farming. And I just want to say the DeFi is another shiny object and you could have made a ton of money, but you could have lost a ton. And this is what, this is a lesson of the big players, how much they can manipulate, how much money they can make, and how much they can make you holding the bag potentially. Not everybody of you, uh, not all of you have, have uh, held the bag. You've made, you may not like bandits, congratulations, but from what I've seen in the comment section, it's a lot, uh, are holding a lot. Anyhow, well, the total value locked, and this is what I'm talking about DeFi, dropped from 3.25 to 6.3 billion in only four days. 
It has now recovered to roughly nine and a half billion, locked according to data from DeFi Pulse. Here's DeFiPulse.com, and you can see that this is how much is locked, 9.68. So, hey, great. This is interesting. Uniswap dominance, 19%. DeFi Pulse index. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. 19.71%. Anyhow, Urine.Finance Finance has become quite popular among ETH uh, Ethereum whales, especially after the launch of Y Vaults, which allow users to deposit funds. And you put your money in, in, in those uh, in those vaults, and it pretty much just spreads them across a bunch of different DeFi, finding you the best yields, gives you the best returns, right? So you don't have to do anything. It's an automated process. Y Vaults have been shown to deliver incredibly high APYs or interest rates, percentage yields, to use with some even reaching the four digit percentages. However, these APYs can be somewhat misleading given that they only show the expected return for a variable rate at a given time. Most yield farming ventures last only a few weeks or even days, whilst, that's a good one, whilst the displayed APYs reflect the interest earned for over an entire year. So you could see like, you know, these interest rates of 93%, you're like, oh, that's awesome. That's for a year. Uh, so just be aware. And of course, these whales come in like, hey, I don't care because I'm going to pump everything up. I'm also going to get these governance tokens like Sushi Swap, which is going to pay me double. And I'm going to get in, sell it, and I'm done. And I can do it all in days, not weeks, not months, days, and I'm out of here. So how much are whales earning? Flipside Crypto built a calculator that measures the interest being earned on Yearn.Finance's Y Vault. Using the Y Curve Vault, which leverages Curve to earn holders interest, Flipside Crypto concluded that one whale in the Y Curve Vault locked over, this is crazy, $97 million worth of Y Curve tokens, a token backed by a basket of stable coins, and eventually made 800 grand after three weeks, which you have to understand. That's almost $100 million, and you make $800,000, which, of course, is fast. But here's the th I mean, if you have $100 million, you're going to make money anyhow. It just, it's, it's, just, it's just a guaranteed uh, process. You're going to make money. Let's do something goofy, invest into retail space and strip mall deals where you just get screwed over. I mean, I don't know. But uh, if you got that much money, I think you're doing okay. So, again, those are whales, 800000 after three weeks. Another whale invested $40 million in the same vault was able to secure a 500,000 profit in the same period of time. So, wow, good for that person. And then lastly, and this was the best one, a third whale gradually deposited, gradually, over almost 11 million and earned around 177,000 in the same period of time. That person knows what they're doing because that was the smallest amount at a parched, paltry 11 million to make 177,000. So that's pretty good. According to Flipside Crypto, while the API was not in the four digit range, Y curve users received a simple return of 2.17%, which equates to an annual percentage yield of 40%. So again, I've seen a lot of shiny objects out there in the crypto space. I've been here since 2017. Some of you have been here much longer, 2012, 2011. Um, but I got to tell you, DeFi, I got to tell you, DeFi is on another level. It, I've, I haven't seen this much craze since uh, the ICOs of 2017. And that was, I thought that was insane uh, looking back. But, um, you know, this DeFi, you have to be careful. And uh, again, be safe with what you do because you never know what's going to happen. And you, and you just, all this FOMO is coming from all different sides. And, and there's no better place to look at than don'tbuymeme.com. This was a joke coin that they created, some developer created, you know, just to talk about how crazy DeFi was. And it's like, it has, you know, over a million dollars into it already. So again, and look what they did. Don't buy, don't farm, don't join Telegram. But it was supposed to be a joke coin. Now it's turning into a real thing. But it's the same thing as Dogecoin. Dogecoin started off as a joke coin. Look, that's still in like the top 50. So, I mean, whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a strange place. It's a weird place. But it's a dangerous place. And you can lose a lot of money. Just be careful. That's all I'm saying. Anyhow, speaking of losing money and uh, different things that are out there, let's jump into Q of the Day. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the office. So, uh, we've got a cue of the day and actually a statement of the day, which is something that we really should be doing a lot more of that I have uh, been neglecting, but I'll get into that in a bit. So the first question here is from Kevin, and Kevin's got a pretty good question. He goes, hey, Rob, I'm puzzled over why stable coins are getting ridiculously high interest rewards, which is uh, kind of odd, too, because when I go to Celsius and I see, like, you know, Bitcoin's at 6.5%, and then uh, Ethereum's at, like, 415 and I see USDC is like 12% or 11%. Tether is the same way. I'm like, what the heck's going on? But uh, the question is, if you look at the Celsius rates, Tether is 11%. Crypto is between 3 and 6%. So what's your take on this? And the next question he has is, 
and also why is uh, Matic and Synthetic uh, also having an interest rate of like 16%. So uh, this, these are the prices right now, or these are the interest rates that you can get uh, on Celsius. And I will say that it's pretty amazing we can get these high interest rates as opposed to our local banks, which gives us like a, a whopping 0.0, .0 well, 0 0.2 or something like that. It's just ridiculous. And who knows, it might even go negative at some point, which please, I hope so. Uh, that would be awesome because it'd be great for our, our, uh, uh, what we are into right now, cryptocurrency digital assets. That would be fantastic. So um, <clears throat> really just comes out of this, supply and demand. Um, it doesn't matter if it, is, if it is Celsius, if it is Voyager, or if it is BlockFi. Uh, there is a, uh, a demand for a lot of these stable coins. And actually, there was an article that was written up, and the same question was asked. And Alex Mashinsky actually after, uh, answered this. Alex is the CEO of Celsius. And he states, uh, stable coins act as the bridge from the fiat world to the crypto world for many of our customers. By turning their physical dollars into digital, uh, stable coin holders can earn over 100X. So who are Celsius loaning out these stable coins to? Well, it is uh, big institutions and institutional players. And there is something going on in the background right now where these institutions are going, hey, we wanna get into it and we need a lot of these stable coins uh, because we don't wanna get our hands dirty with things like Bitcoin and, and those other type of you know dirty cryptos. Uh, we want to actually just get into the game, but we want to have somebody else uh, do the dirty work for us. Really, that's what it is, and there's a lot of demand for that. Now, the same thing is also happening, I think, with um, uh, Matic and Synthetics. However, um, with those two tokens, you have to understand that if you're on a <clears throat> exchange, a new exchange or a new business or a new, well, we'll say a new bank, you need liquidity in some way, shape, or form. So even if you have just a little bit of demand, uh, for whatever it is, you're still going to need that liquidity. So on Celsius, they probably don't have a lot of Matic. They probably don't have a lot of synthetics. So they're probably offering a pretty high percentage because there's a little bit of demand. And they say, hey, we don't have it. We are short on it. So uh, for the institutions that actually want that, uh, we'll give it to you. But uh, it's going to be, you know, the percentage rate is going to go up because it's not, there's not, not a lot out there. So uh, for you to put that in, that is probably what it is. So uh, what I really need to do, what I really need to do, is to get Alex back on the on the program and uh, talk to us about exactly why the rates are exactly what they are and why they change and why they fluctuate from week to week. We know it's supply and demand, but just to go into a little bit more detail would be fantastic. And um, this is one of the reasons why I like Celsius because when they loan these out to those institutions, um, so they're they're loaning your cryptocurrency out to an institution. And what they're saying is, if you want this, you know, that is fine, but you have to put up uh, a pretty big amount of collateral. We're not gonna, just going to give you to you one for one. It has to be like 150% or whatever else is. If the price of those cryptocurrencies goes down, like it did in March, you either have to pay us back immediately uh, for the whole loan, or you have to uh, bring in more collateral because the collateral that you put up actually went down to the ground. So the same type of thing. And this actually just happened uh, three or four weeks ago. I think it was about four weeks ago where Alex Mashinsky, again, in Twitter, said, hey, uh, we're going to have to either have you uh, put in more for uh, the collateral, or we're going to have to recall those loans. And uh, I think it's a pretty good system, so no one gets liquidated, and they, he just says this is what's going to happen. So uh, that's a very easy, uh, peasy type of way to say it, supply and demand. I'd like to get Alex in here to really dig down deep into it, but um, I will say that there must be a pretty big amount of people, institutions, who want to be in this space because they're making a lot of loans. And uh, that's all I'll say about that. So that is the first part. Second part is, uh, this is from Will. And Will says, uh, hey, Dan, uh, just a heads up. I was on Facebook today. Uh, Tom McWallet had a post about now accepting DOT. So uh, Facebook, a bunch of stuff, right? And he said he was reading the comments, and there was a post from Atomic Wallet in the comments about sending Bitcoin and receive some back. So before I even look at the image, I already know exactly what it is. Uh, if you send us 0.1 Bitcoin or 0.5 or 0.01, whatever it is, uh, we'll send you double the Bitcoin back or we'll send you triple the Bitcoin back. And we do all the time as an appreciation to our customers or some BS or whatever else it is. And of course, when I took a look at the actual image, uh, that is exactly uh, what it is. And it's just people going through. 
Now, Will here has been on the, the, the uh, YouTube channel for quite some time, and he goes, uh, uh, anyway, he goes, I've attached a screenshot. I thought they might be a scam, but when there was heaps of comments saying they had received the Bitcoin and thought, well, maybe it's like the Uniswap offer. And he goes, and I can hear you right now saying it's a scam. So we used to do scam of the day, like every single day. And it seems like things started to, you know, mellow out. And then all of a sudden when the Uniswap thing came in, then all of a sudden we had a bunch of uh, videos about Uniswap and people were getting scammed left and right. And I know for people on this channel, you're pretty savvy. I mean, you are pretty savvy because you I mean you know about cryptocurrencies, you know about digital assets, you know about nano ledgers, you know about it's not your key, it's not your crypto, and all those types of things that we all know ad nauseum. But you have to understand, there's going to be new people that are coming in, or somebody like Will who just gets caught up in the moment, and we just have to constantly remind ourselves. You know, it's like it's like working out. Like we know we should all work out, we know we should run, lift weights, and all those things, right? But then we're like, well, the couch is right there, and so is that bag of Doritos. So it's one of those things where like, it, we just need a constant reminder of why we should be doing those things so we don't be like, hey, I don't wanna get fat. Hey, I don't wanna have a heart attack. Hey, I don't wanna you know, have all these problems. Same thing with scams. Hey, uh, there are no asymmetrical giveaways. Hey, guess what? No one likes you that much. Hey, guess what? You're not special, sorry. And uh, hopefully that will be burned in your memory uh, that uh, there's scams everywhere. And if you see something like this, just remember, uh, go directly to the uh, official website, uh, go right to Atomic, send them an email going, hey, are you sending, are you giving away uh, 0.3 Bitcoin for 0.1? I'll tell you no. Uh, if you see CZ Binance in some stupid video saying he's gonna give away Bitcoin, go to Binance, ask him, he's gonna say no. Brian Armstrong's gonna say no. Alex Machins is gonna say no. All the different uh, websites you go to, the official websites are gonna say, uh, we're not doing that. So just remember that, that there's no free ride, there's no free lunch, and uh, you, you're not, you're not that special to get a bunch of free money. Uh, I mean, maybe you are special, but not that special. So uh, that is it for today. So uh, thanks for uh, going through the rambles there. Let's, uh, let's jump back. All right, so that's it. I just want to make this uh, quick. Thanks for sticking with me through the whole thing. A lot of information out there, but it's good stuff, I think. I just want to give some quick shout outs to uh, all the people who've signed up. So uh, let's see. Martin Benuelos, John Carter. That was a pretty good movie. Joey Serena. Uh, Jamie A or Jaime A, uh, Jesse Kirkland. I'm gonna try this one. Check this out. Hervoje Soik. Pretty sure I nailed that one. Uh, Modern Samurai, and I'm sure he'll be talking about my salmon shirt. Uh, I am not I. Bob, Telos, Telos, Teos, and Piamet. So thanks everybody for signing up. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. YouTube generally uh, takes care of all that stuff, so I don't know what they're doing. And uh, that is it. So again, thanks for sticking with me. Appreciate it. See you on the next one.